G'day and welcome back to another great episode of Blokes World. If you missed last week's episode, I thought I'd lost my wallet with all my cards and everything in it. We drove all the way back from Nashville, back up into the sleepy mountains here in Tennessee, and I had to go through a garbage bin at the front of a Dairy Queen at 2 a.m. Well, viewers, if you uh, saw the end of last week's episode, you'll know that the Great Australian uh, Blokes World USA Tour has taken a bit of a turn. Heisenberg over here is currently going through the garbage bin from the Dairy Queen like a hobo. Man, we better hurry up before the cops come. This looks so... I don't know how we're going to explain this to the cops if they come. We drove back to the service station, which I thought it was at, and guess what? We're in the God-fearing South here. Everyone's got a Jesus Live sticker at the front of their house. So I was pretty confident I was going to get it back. And sure enough, no money taken. Everything's in there. We're all good. I'm in my pyjamas. It's been a very stressful last uh, 12 hours. Let's just roll them credits, shut the doors, make our way to Nashville. This is the Blokes World NASCAR road trip. Well, with the credit cards back in my pocket, we were good to go. So we jumped back on the highway and made our way to Nashville because I'd arranged a couple of the local characters we were going to interview. But first up, we had a breakfast tradition here on Blokes World. Twinkies. Welcome to the house of Jay Ryan. That's right, Jay Ryan is the man who owns Gusher Cycles. We found him on the internet and said to ourselves, this bloke belongs on our show. He basically builds choppers and bikes underneath his house. He's an absolute legend. I mean, we rocked up here on a Tuesday morning and he had arranged for all these blokes to take a day off work. He lit up the barbecue in the backyard and created a bit of a party for us. We had an absolute great time. I mean, check out some of the bikes. I mean, this one here, it is an absolute weapon and some of the paintwork that's gone into these bikes are fantastic, let alone the fabrication. And he's doing this all underneath his house. I mean, that is awesome. Anyway, right now, let's meet one of the lucky customers from Gusher Cycles as they tell us about their ride. G'day, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name's Kane, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> what's that between your legs? <laughs> it's, uh, it's an 82 iron head, Sportster Harley Davidson. <laughs> How much you spent on that? Probably like four grand or something, US. What's the best memory you have of your bike? Uh, <laughs> Every time I've ridden it. <laughs> what would you trade that for? Uh, two more. What was your first ever motorcycle? Uh, 78 CB750 Honda. Hey, tell me about your running gear. <laughs> I mean, I got a nice pair of Nikes at home, uh, some sweats. Other than that, I pretty much run shirtless. Hey, yo, hey, not that running gear. Tell me about your bike. Uh, it's a uh, you know, 1,000cc, four speed. It's not terribly fast, but it doesn't really bother me. I guess the rabbit ears, the bars. Uh, Springer's pretty unique. Tiny front wheel. That's usually like, you can't ride this without some whacker on the street just like stopping and beeping. And uh, you tell me more. We might be able to tee up a gig for you down under. Maybe with the Freestyle Kings. I have nothing left to say. Blocks world. Jay Ryan, you're an absolute legend, mate. Great to finally meet you. My pleasure. Mate, awesome. Anyway, right now we're going to make our way back on the road. See you later, everyone. Yeah. Southern hospitality. You've got to love it. Anyway, camera three, how good was that, eh? That was awesome. Yeah, it was fantastic. We've got to hit the road. Anyway, come on, let's get in. Well, how awesome was that, eh? That Gosh, your cycles. A lot of bikes there. A lot of bikes, a lot of good blokes. He does everything himself. What a legend. Cupcake? Thanks. Cheers. 
All right, right now, we're gonna make our way to an RV park. We've been camping illegal, but right now I've got a real treat for camera three. I've booked us in something real special. We'll see you after this. Why'd you invite the Tennessee I don't know, fan? does anybody actually <laughs> know them? <laughs> well, viewers, we finally made it to our accommodation. We're staying at the Jello, the Jellystone National Park in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a park with a Yogi Bear type influence. This is gonna be awesome, eh? It's somewhere I've always wanted to stay in Nashville. Well, the truth be known, we haven't had a shower since Talladega, so it's like a second day no shower, so we're manking. And they've got a laundry here as well. And while we do that, viewers, you're gonna check out the Hot Rod and Custom Auto Expo all the way back in Sydney, Australia. I got the lid rolled back Winning our best We're gonna get it on 30 We're gonna get it on 30 We're gonna get it on 30 Race those three cowboys Yeah, g'day viewers, it's Andy Minnis here from the Hot Rod and Custom Auto Expo at Rose Hill Gardens We've got cars from Western Australia, Queensland, South Australia It's blown us away, we just, we can't even thank these people enough to support this show all right, viewers, a special treat for you right now. A car that we've been drooling over all weekend and we just tracked down the owner. Tony, welcome to Blokes World. Cheers, Otto. How are you going? Mate, really well. You've done some fantastic work here. This is a, like a head turner, a showstopper. Everyone is coming here and praising this yeah. work you've done. And what are you running up the front there? That's an awesome uh, bit of gear. 383, blowing stroke, injected small block. It's only got about 600 horses. Yep. It's half tuned. This is my first show. Yeah, okay. So, so you've come out of the box and got a gold medal. That's not bad, eh? <laughs> I thought I'll put it out there and see what happens and I'm surprised how many people have come up and Oh mate, it credit. is beautiful and the great thing about this car is the undercarriage. It's just spotless and shining, eh? I had a friend of mine in Mikey's garage. Mm -hmm. um, he spent like about four days just to get it to where it is and yep. I'm really pleased with that. So what did it start off as? Was it like an old wreck or was it... No, I took a photo of my garage, it was empty Yep. and I've every nut and bolt. Every nut and bolt? Every nut and bolt, mate. It's all brand new. Once or twice I thought, nah, that's enough, I'll get rid of it. Yep. But nah, I persevered and uh, I'm glad I did. Righto viewers, we had to stop because we saw this absolute piece of art. I'm here with the boys from Eval. Welcome to the show, Billy. How are you, buddy? Awesome. Nate, welcome to the show. Thanks. Mate, awesome. Tell us about this bike. It started off as an 86 Sportster motor that we bought. We got an invite to go to um, the Moon Ice show in Japan, so we had to build a bike in seven months. So we had a very tight budget. It's not the most desirable Harley motor out there. So we had to sort of make it come together and this is what we come up with. Mate, that is awesome. So did you go to Moon Eyes last year? Uh, last year, yeah, 2000. So did we. How did we not bump into you? We were there walking yeah. around. What Absolutely. a great car show, oh, huh? It's an awesome show. Best in the world for sure, definitely. And aren't they a passionate bunch oh, over there? They love the it, scene. Not only will they stand behind their bike, but they'll fully get dressed up. Oh, yeah, they'll be surrounded with props and yeah. that. Did you see the guys with yeah. their Californian Highway Patrol car? Yeah, no, they love it. But this was to sort of showcase our, our workmanship, yep. our first bike of this level. Um, and let's just see where it goes from there, you know? No, yeah. I think it's great. And you can see the rise of these bike shops now becoming like little communal hubs, yeah. you know? I go visit Smoke Garage in Brisbane yeah. quite a bit, yeah. you know? And those boys have got coffee machines, there's a barber in the shop. No, exactly right. You know, our shop's got a similar sort of feel to it, I guess. People walk in and expect a beard, so um, you've got to create that sort of um, atmosphere and, and that's what it's all about, you know? It's just um, being a bit more relaxed, have a bit of fun and and come up with something cool. Oh mate, I think it's great and I think it's, we're heading to a great period of time where people don't want to have anything that's coming out of the box. Yeah. You know, they want to convert it, they want to change it. Yeah, exactly. And what you boys have done here is an absolute testament to a lot of hard work. Uh, Thank you so no, much for being no. on the show. Well, apart from all the awesome cars and bikes at the Hot Rod Expo, one of the other great things they had just outside was the Freestyle Kings show, featuring some of the best motocross riders in Australia. Here's their announcer, Bushy. The riders here today, we got three heavy hitters here, you know, we've got J.O. Archer. J.O., he's in Melbourne, Victoria, um, he's up here this weekend. J.O. is an ex-motocross, supercross little gun, you know, he come up through the ranks, um, you know, plenty of time on a bike and um, just made the transition over into freestyle motocross, just like butter, mate, you know, he's, he's ripping, he's out here, so. Also, we've got Jake Smith from Griffith, New South Wales. 
Jake Smith, mate, he's a little animal, man. A little powerhouse, eh? He's got some big tricks, and he just doesn't give a of what he does or how the setup is. He just gets out there and tears the joint to bits. And then um, those two boys are on the four bangers, but you know me, Ado, I love the two bangers, mate. And so we got Jordan Sprague, he's on the YZ252 banger and he's in the mix with the four bangers. And George, um, new, new sort of coming onto the game, you know, jumping the portables and stuff. And you know, George has, um, you know, he's been, he's been taking a liking to the setup and he rides really good. The setup that the Freestyle Kings have got, um, big safe setup. Josh has really thought about rider safety and making sure everything's Mickey Mouse for the boys and um, that's his number one priority that's for sure and he's got a big truck, big landing, um, you know it's nice and safe, always runs the airbag, double wide kicker too so you know big double wide puppy so those boys mate if they miss that they're getting sacked you know what I mean there's no way you're going to miss that ramp and uh, yeah they set it back at 75 foot gap uh, you know 80 feet to the sweet spot they call it and um, yeah no it's a good setup mate and just travel around and we have a few good weekends, that's for sure. Well, we're going to get to the party, race those street cowboys. Well, viewers, we've rocked up. Tonight's a big night. We're going bow fishing with Brian and Connor. And the boys have just turned up. We were starting to get a bit worried. We've been standing out here in the dark in uh, Nashville. We're right next to the river. Welcome to bow fishing, Nashville style. We were originally supposed to hook up with this professional outfit who take tourists out, but then I went onto the Bow Fishing Tennessee Championship website and found these two blokes, Brian and his young son Connor. These guys have taken out the state titles. We contacted them off Facebook, and before you know it, he came and picked us up and took us out for a life-changing experience. You want to shoot some fish? We call it force feeding them. <laughs> we, don't, we don't wait for them to bite, we force feed them. So. That's nice. I tell you what viewers, if you ever get the chance, you should go bow fishing. It is such a rush, and at the end of the day, you're an environmentalist with a weapon, because you're taking carp out. Most of these are set 40, 50 pound area. He shoots 40 pounds, he's himself. I normally don't like to go lower than that myself on this type of bow, but I shoot myself about 50 pounds. This is an AMS retriever, they call it. Mm -hmm. Notice it does nothing when you turn it in this little clutch like brake thing here. Yep. When you, you turn it and you start squeezing it, it starts pulling itself. Mm -hmm. If you squeeze too hard, you can't reel it. It's hard to reel. So it should be easy to reel. But all the line feeds in to this bottle. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. When I reel it up, I'll bring it back like that so that slide stays out there. And I'll lay it in, knock it up. I'll pull it back and I'll shoot. And I'll just reel it in. There's no sights, nothing. When we shoot, it's all instinctive, yep. basically. You know, I just I see something and I just I just shoot it. But what kind of what you'll have is a a normal anchor point, what I call anchor point, like here. You know, most hunters have a real, you know, they get an anchor point and they got peep sights and all that stuff. We don't have none of that. But I do like to come up here. Basically, what I do is I it, it just touches my chin right here in that same spot. But I mean, you just see a fish and it's instinctive, you know, just shoot. You just kind of point. Um, We'll practice. Yeah, cool. We'll go practice. We'll shoot some deal. You're gonna miss. I miss. He misses. Everybody misses. The, the more you practice, the better you get. Yep. Till you learn that instinctive shooting. And we should explain to the people out there the reason why we, we why we're hunting this particular fish is because it's an introduced species. Yep. It's killing off you all your crappie, your bass, your bass. Yeah, it's, our sport fish. Yep. And it's doing the same thing in Australia with our yep. Murray cod, mm -hmm. and it's destroying all the riverbeds because they yep. just destroy the bottom yep. of the rivers. All these carp come in, and of course, there's huge schools of them. We won't see a fraction of what's really out there. There's huge schools of them, and they're, they're just like vacuuming. Everything that the other fish need, they're overnumbered. Some of them are invasive, and, so, and most of them are just overpopulated because nobody fishes them. Mm -hmm. You can't really use a rod and reel and really have much luck at catching them. It's hard to go target them with a rod and reel. Yep. It, you know, so I mean, so. I always, I always think of it as the lake is a big nightclub, and we're the security bouncer guards yeah. chucking out the wrong things that's out right, of the nightclub. That's right. So, you can go ahead and practice if you want there. Draw it. Nice and hard. Yep, pull it all the way back. Yep, there you go. Now, when you shoot, grab that brake. Yep. Because the line will keep coming out. Yeah, okay. Yep, but when we shoot a fish, what you're going to do mainly is you're probably going to lay the bow down and pull this in by hand. Smell that. Do you smell that? Yeah. That's, that's buffalo carp. That's, see that? That's a buffalo. But you'll be able to tell. You see this mud line stirred up? Yep. There's a mud line. That, that's where all these buffalo are over here feeding and stuff. But I'll grab my bow since I'm gonna be over here. 
way if something gets by, I can shoot it over here. So there's one to shoot that fish. Oh, you was so close. You was so close. Oh, oh. You was so close. Was that the same fish he shot at? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. Hey. You know, it's actually easier to teach somebody how to bow fish that hadn't ever used a bow. You done got a, a bag fish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole pack of chicky, I think. <laughs> you ever heard of light refraction? Yes. Something in the water, you it's know? Like you it, it it's basically deeper than it looks. Yep. And uh, so like like if you, see a, if you see a fish, you're basically, unless he's like right at the top of the water, but mostly like that one you just shot at, when you shot, which I know you ain't got a lot to aim with and you're just trying to get the instinct even trying to get one on. But what you would normally do, if I seen him, I would shoot basically right under his belly and I'd hit him dead center. The deeper they are, the further under them you gotta shoot. And, sure. and that's something that nobody good, can teach you. That's a good You tip. have to just get out here and do it. You're gonna yeah. miss, you're gonna miss. And the, the, the one thing you always remember, aim low. Yep. Aim low, aim low. There you go. All right, be ready. We're on the we're on the good stuff. Oh, he's a big one. Back me up. Quick, he's off. Shoot him, shoot him. He's good. He's good. There you go. Yeah. Dude, Woo. there you go. Look at that. He's holding pretty good. Though. Yeah, my first. You one. got him, dude. Yeah. There you go. Big buffalo. He's probably 25 pounds. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, every shot is practice, buddy. Even if it's a backup shot, you know? You just, yeah. That's good practice. These guys are from Australia. How are y'all done? Yeah, oh. good day. You yourself? Very good, very good. Well, well I've only been at this for like 15 minutes and I'm already addicted. <laughs> <laughs> it's very addicting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very. Snapping turtle. Yeah. It's like a dinosaur. Yeah. Hey, we'll get back in the back of this little cove where it's real shallow and you might there might be a few different fish that you'll get to shoot at for practice anyway. Awesome. I'm having the greatest time ever. Now here are some reasons why I love bow fishing. It's the complete opposite of fishing. For one, the guy with the smallest fish, he is an absolute legend. And number two, you've got to make as much noise as you can, because that's what brings the carp up. So we cruise this lake listening to four different ACDC albums while we're smashing carp. Dead carp on the floor, we're in Nashville. And number three, you don't have to put bait on a hook. She's just good to go. Pull it back, slam a carp. There's a lot, there's a good fish. Shoot that one, go over and shoot that. Go shoot it, he's sitting still. Ooh, so close. Where was I with him, was I in front? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Fish the barrel, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. Even then, I'd probably shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> well, we're about four hours into it now, and I'd been slamming away. I turned around, and I saw camera three say, come on, we've got enough, let's head back. And then I thought I'd hand him the bow. And then, before I knew it, it was five hours later, and he didn't want to go in. He was hooked as well. There you go. Now, unlike regular fishing, folks, the smaller fish are actually more challenging to shoot. Well, viewers, we've had an absolutely sensational night tonight. What time is it now? It's about three in the morning? It's about three in the morning. Geez, that went quick, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. My highlight of tonight was when we were sitting on the boat and we just saw that big buck just shoot off underneath the boat. Yeah. You just launched one and intercepted him. Yeah. That yeah. was the shot of the night. That yeah. was wicked. Anyway, it's getting late, young Connor. You're, you're falling asleep. The sun's going to be out in a couple of minutes. It's, oh God, it's like, it's so late, but we're so pumped with adrenaline. We better go to sleep because we've got another big day tomorrow. Boys, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Champions. Yes, sir. Southern hospitality, it just keeps on hitting us in the face. Just like those calves with the arrows. Make sure you watch next week because we make our way to Gatlinburg and we make our way to Pigeon's Forge and we get plate dress up. All right, viewers, it's now 4 a.m. We've just finished uh, carp fishing. Oh, we stink. Oh, we, don't, we just stink of carp now. You can check it out. We've been boat fishing. Yeah! We are starving. We were so excited. We've got to eat dinner. But the great thing about America is everything's open 24 hours, so we've come to the Waffle House. We 
Yes, so not going home. We belong in Nashville. <laughs>